Our story begins in the east of England in a place called Norfolk. Now in Norfolk, you may find yourself in a town called Deerham. A short way from that town, you might find yourself driving, strolling, hopping or skipping around Honeypot Wood. Now upon closer inspection of Honeypot Wood, you may find, well, many things. But one thing, however, is of particular interest to us on this most blustery of winter days. A small, brown, toy rabbit, full of fluff and wonderful stuff, called Bedwin Bunny. My tail! Oh no, my tail! The cry echoed through the crisp morning air, startling poor Mr Wilson, a hedgehog who's one of the oldest residents of Honeypot Wood. Whatever is that noise? questioned a flustered Mrs Wilson, the cries growing closer at a rather alarming rate. At that very moment, a brown blur came whizzing out of the trees and down the path. Is that Bedwin? mumbled Mr Wilson, his eyes squinting in the direction of the fast-approaching bunny. Mrs. Wilson called out to him, Slow down, my dear, whatever is the matter? Bedwin came to an abrupt halt, sending up a puff of snow and leaves. Mrs. Wilson, sobbed the young rabbit. My tail, I've lost my tail. Bedwin explained that he'd been playing in the snow when suddenly he slipped and his little cotton tail caught on the brambles and thread by thread it had come undone. With a whoosh, he told them, his tail was swept into the air and out of sight. I searched all morning, but I just can't find it anywhere. Oh, you poor dear, Mrs Wilson said as she hugged Bedwin warmly. As Mrs Wilson comforted Bedwin, a beautiful family of bushy-tailed squirrels called the Burwoods arrived. Mr Burwood looked concerned at the scene that greeted them. Good morning, Mr and Mrs Wilson. Is that young Bedwin? What's the matter with the poor lad? And what was all that noise a moment ago? Bedwin recounted his story again to the Burwood family, gesturing wildly as he described the events. When he'd finished, they looked at him sympathetically. And you've already searched the area thoroughly? asked Mrs Burwood. Yes, Bedwin replied. I've searched for hours. The Chapman family helped me too, but still we could not find it, not even a thread. Mr Burwood sighed. I imagine a tale as white as yours would be nearly impossible to find in all of this snow, Bedwin. The group pondered over solutions to the young rabbit's problem in the following moments, and for a good few moments after that. Replacing the tail with a snowball was among the suggestions, but was quickly dismissed when Mr Wilson pointed out that it would melt when the winter was over, never mind the cold bottom it would give Bedwin. When it seemed all of their options were exhausted, the youngest of the Burwood family, Holly, excitedly spoke up. Bedwin should write to Father Christmas and ask for a new tail, don't you think? Mother? Father? Mrs Wilson beamed. I think that's a wonderful idea, Holly. Mr Wilson nodded, his moustache shaking too. I agree, but Bedwin has no home address. How will Father Christmas know where to find him? The group fell silent for a short while as they took to pondering once again. Bedwin broke the silence, having decided to take matters into his own paws. I'll, I'll build myself a house, then I'll have an address, then I will write a Christmas list and Father Christmas will be able to find me and bring me a new tale. Mr Burwood smiled. That's the spirit, Bedwin. Although Christmas is only 11 days away, do you think you can build your house that quickly and send off your list to the North Pole? A look of determination spread upon Bedwin's face. He stood tall and puffed out his fluffy chest. I can do it, he said. I need my tail back. It's terribly lonesome without it. The little toy rabbits scurried and hurried all over Honeypot Wood for the rest of the day, gathering all the bits and all of the pieces he could find to build his house. Bedwin travelled nearly all the way to the pond on the very far side of the woods and back again, a long way in such cold snow. What with Honeypot Wood being such a quiet and peaceful place, Bedwin's rushing around was causing quite the stir in the community. Words spread around the woods of the great task Bedwin had undertaken. For days and nights he worked tirelessly, which was quite clear from the trail of footprints he left behind wherever he went. One morning, Bedwin was debating what different uses all of the items he'd collected would have. Mr and Mrs Wilson came by, carrying a strange flat piece of plastic, which you and I would call a library card. We thought you might be able to use this for your house, Bedwin, said Mrs Wilson. Bedwin was very grateful and thanked the old couple for their kind gesture. 
As the days passed, Bedwin had more and more visitors bearing gifts to help him build his wonderful house. It was really quite overwhelming. The Chapmans, a badger family from the northeast area of the woods near the great chestnut tree, offered Bedwin some tatty books that Mr Chapman had collected on his long Sunday evening walks over the years. Mrs Swift, a kind old barn owl, bought Bedwin what looked to be an old school folder she'd found nearby. Most surprisingly of all was a visit from a usually grumpy toad from the great pond on the far side of Honeypot Wood called Mr Thomas, who always kept himself to himself, thank you very much. Mr Thomas mumbled in his deep croaky voice, "Ear, I heard you was building a house. Seeing as it's Christmas, <clears throat> thought you might make better use of these than me. Mr Thomas presented Bedwin with some of his finest lily pads from his faraway watery home. Bedwin beamed with happiness and hugged him. Oh, thank you, Mr Thomas. These are perfect and will be a great help. The old toad let a smile stretch across his wide face for the briefest of instances before clearing his throat and shuffling away. <coughs> all right, all right, get off me. I'd do anything to stop you running around here all day, disturbing my peace and quiet. He turned and hopped away slowly down the path, mumbling something or other about humming bugs. Bedwin laughed and called out to him, Goodbye, Mr Thomas, and a Merry Christmas to you. The days continued to pass, as they usually do, and Bedwin's house was looking more and more complete by the hour. As the sun was setting on December the 22nd, a very tired toy rabbit looked up at his beautiful house and let out a happy sigh. It was nearly finished. Some of the residents gathered in front of the house and were helping Bedwin to tidy up. Mr Wilson was etching a number one into a small post, his moustache twitching with excitement. Mrs Burwood approached. Bedwin, here you are. Holly made this for you. She handed him a poor-made Christmas wreath decorated with dried berries. Bedwin smiled from ear to ear and wiped a small patch of dirt from his cheek. This is just the finishing touch I was looking for. He turned towards Holly and shouted, Thank you, Holly. This wreath is beautiful. Holly blushed and giggled. Bedwin hung the wreath upon his door, which was carved from what appeared to be an old bird box. Bedwin turned to his friends and said, That should do it. Thank you all so much for your help. The small crowd gave out a cheer and a round of applause. Well done, Bedwin. You did it. Bedwin beamed to his friends. No, it wasn't just me. We all did it. The crowd fell silent again as Mrs Wilson cried out, The list, Bedwin! It needs to go right now if it's to reach Father Christmas in time. Bedwin panicked and found a small piece of paper in the leftover materials they'd gathered for his house. In his finest writing, he started to write his first ever letter to Father Christmas. Bedwin wouldn't tell or show anyone what was inside it. He addressed it to the North Pole and wrote his address on it. Bedwin Bunny, number one, Honeypot Wood on Honeypot Lane, Dereham, Norfolk. Mrs Swift, the barn owl, grabbed hold of the letter tightly and flapped her light white wings as she lifted into the chilly evening air. Thank you, Mrs Swift, Bedwin called after her. Bedwin looked hopefully into the sky until she disappeared into the distance. All that was left to do now was wait and hope. December 25th, Christmas Day. The sun crept into the sky, sending sparkles dancing across the snow and ice. The frost covered the thistles and trees, making a most wonderful sight. It was always particularly peaceful on Christmas morning in Honeypot Wood. The low hum of nearby villages and motorways seemed to take a well-deserved rest for the day. Somewhere in the distance, a bird was cheerfully singing a beautifully festive song that was carried across the countryside on a light breeze. Bedwin awoke on hearing the song. His eyes opened wide and he jumped up as soon as he realised what day it was. He had that unmistakable feeling of excitement that comes to most on Christmas Day. Bedwin felt the tingle where his tail used to be, momentarily stopping his excitement and reminding him of what this special day could bring back to him. Bedwin ran to his tree post outside and was disappointed to find nothing but a small drift of fresh snow that had gathered during the night. Bedwin hopped back to his house and waited patiently. He did not want to leave his new home just in case Father Christmas came and he missed him. With every hour that passed, Bedwin was becoming less and less hopeful of his Christmas wish coming true and all of his hard work was for nothing. Bedwin sat with his small brown head in his paws and sighed. From outside his house, he heard a beautiful sound breaking the silence. 
silent night, holy night. Bedwin walked curiously to the door and peeked outside. He was greeted by a crowd of his friends and neighbours, all gathered around the front of his house that they'd helped to build over the past month. The beautiful voice belonged to Holly Burwood. Mrs Wilson grinned. Merry Christmas, Bedwin, she called, as they all joined Holly in singing a carol. Bedwin smiled at the scene in front of him and sat down on one of Mr Thomas's lily pads that had become uncovered when the snow had melted in the winter sunshine and listened to all they had to sing. There were gruff voices, shy, quiet voices, loud, bellowing voices and a few wrongly pitched voices. Yet Bedwin had never heard a more wonderful choir than the one in front of him and it helped him forget about his tale for just a moment. As they sang out the last words, silence fell upon Honeypot Wood once again. That was lovely, laughed Bedwin, and a Merry Christmas to you. Everyone remained gathered outside number one until eventually the afternoon gave way to evening. Bedwin looked at the winter sky as the sun was setting behind the frosty trees around them. He spoke to his friends. I'm sorry, everyone. I don't think Father Christmas is coming today. Perhaps he didn't get my list in time. Thank you all so much for your help over the past weeks. I can't tell you how much it all meant to me. At least we tried. Please don't think it rude, but I think I'm going to go to bed now. Bedwin turned away from the small crowd and, looking sadly down at his feet, started to walk back towards his house. Mrs Wilson looked entirely deflated. In fact, every animal and creature in attendance had a sad look upon their face. The whole of Honeypot Wood fell silent, apart from the slow crunch crunch, crunch of Bedwin's footsteps in the snow as he neared his door. Bedwin's ears pricked up as soon as he heard it. A small twinkling sound was approaching from far away. He heard a gasp from behind him as the noise drew closer and nearer. Bedwin felt excitement building within him as he could hear the sound clearly now. It was Father Christmas's sleigh bells. Just as he turned his small brown eyes to look at the sky, he heard an almighty joyous voice booming through the early evening air. Ho, ho, ho! A mighty red and gold sleigh glided gracefully down through the trees and landed on the ground with a soft thump and puff of snow. Eight beautiful reindeer were slowly pulling the sleigh to a stop, their coats thick and perfectly groomed, almost sparkling to the eye. The bells attached to their harness twinkled gently again as they came to a rest. That's when they all saw him, a wonderfully large old man who chuckled as he climbed down from the great shining sleigh. His clothes were resplendent and the brightest colours of his great cloak lit up the faces of all those who saw Father Christmas turned towards the small crowd, laughing a jolly laugh, his big white beard softly rising up and down with his large belly with every chuckle. His eyes were full of wisdom and gleamed with comforting warmth, his nose bright red like one of his reindeers. His great voice filled the dimly lit winter scene once again. <laughs> Hello, my friends, old and new. Father Christmas stood before Bedwin and looked down at him fondly. And a hello to you, young fellow, he said in a softer voice than before. I wonder if you might help me. I'm looking for a Mr Bedwin Bunny who lives at number one Honeypot Wood on Honeypot Lane. The jolly old man looked behind Bedwin at the small house built from materials that had been gathered from all over the woods and then at the numbered post outside it. Why, that appears to be this address. Might you be Bedwin Bunny? Bedwin gleamed happily up at the man. I I am, sir, yes. A and you're Father Christmas. Ho, 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 bellowed the man, sending a vibration that knocked snow from the leaves of a nearby tree. That's right, my little friend. And might I say, what a wonderful house you have. I can tell it's filled with love in every nook and every cranny. You must be very proud to live in such a place. Bedwin smiled and before he knew it, he was blurting out the whole story of how he'd lost his tail and his friends had all helped him to build a house. Father Christmas smiled down at the toy rabbit when he finally finished his tail and took a large breath again. You're very blessed to have such caring and kind friends, Bedwin. Very blessed indeed. The animals and creatures that were gathered around the house all beamed with pride on hearing their praise. 
I must say, continued Father Christmas, yours was the very last Christmas list I received. I was nearly aboard my sleigh and ready to leave when it was given to me. Father Christmas reached into a pocket inside his great red coat and pulled out a small folded piece of paper. He unfolded it with great care and he read aloud, One new tale to replace my missing one. He looked down at Bedwin. A missing tale, you say? Might I see, dear boy? Bedwin turned around to show where his tail once was, which was now just a small tear in his furry coat, with a tuft of thread loosely hanging from it. Oh my! exclaimed Father Christmas. You poor lad! Hmm, now let me see, he said, rubbing his great beard in his gloved hands. He glanced down at his hand, holding a tuft of his beard, and let out a deep chuckle. I say, Mrs Wilson, would you happen to have any scissors that I might borrow to help our friend Bedwin here? Mrs Wilson nodded curiously. I do indeed, Mr Christmas. One moment, please. She hurried away and shortly returned, much faster than hedgehogs are usually known to move. Mrs Wilson handed the scissors to Father Christmas, who thanked her very much. The small crowd fell silent as they watched his every move. Even the breeze itself seemed to hold its breath. The wonderfully jolly man pinched a small tuft of his beard between his finger and thumb and gently snipped it off. He stepped towards Bedwin with another soft crunch on the snow and bent down on his knee. Come here, Bedwin, he said in a tone that was entirely calming, and Bedwin hopped forwards. Father Christmas picked the small toy rabbit up into his large gloves. Bedwin felt warmth spread through his entire body from the tips of his ears down to each of his paws. The air around them felt like a warm fireplace, and Bedwin thought to himself that the great old man smelt like rich cinnamon, ginger spices and toasted marshmallows. All of these wonderful things and many more at once. Every one of the animals in Honeypot Wood were watching Bedwin now, holding their breath with anticipation. Bedwin felt a tingle all over his body, like pins and needles. The air around them swirled through a spectrum of colours just like the northern lights. Father Christmas smiled at Bedwin as they both lit up with magical light. They shone so bright with bursting swirls of colour that for miles around they lit up the late evening sky. All at once the light dimmed and the lazy evening sun turned the sky a deep shade of orange once again. The animals looked on as their eyes adjusted to the light. Father Christmas let out a great laugh. Ho, ho! Oh, bless my beard. Everyone beamed with delighted surprise as they saw Bedwin. His coat was glistening with a beautiful shine, just like the reindeer. A tartan ribbon was tied around his neck in a perfect bow, and his wide eyes shined brighter than ever. Father Christmas placed Bedwin down onto the soft snow. Everyone looked on at his splendour. Mrs Wilson sobbed with joy whilst leaning into Mr Wilson, who wouldn't admit it if you asked, but he had tears in his eyes himself. Young Holly Burwood stepped forward and pointed, Bedwin, look, she gasped in excitement. Bedwin followed her gaze and looked down and there he saw the fluffiest, softest, whitest tail he had ever laid eyes on. Father Christmas had taken a piece of his very own beard and made Bedwin a brand new tail from it. He wiggled and wagged his new tail in joy and hopped up and down ecstatic as the crowd let out a cheer. Bedwin leaped towards Father Christmas and gave him the biggest hug his little arms could manage. Merry Christmas, Bedwin, whispered the ancient man into the toy rabbit's long ears. Merry Christmas to you too, Bedwin replied with a smile so wide that it hurt his cheeks. The large old man hopped up with a swoosh of his red cloak. He turned to the audience of Honeypot Wood's residence, and what an audience it was by now. Thank you all for being so kind and opening up your hearts to help young Bedwin find me and to get his tail back. How lucky he is to have friends such as yourselves. He walked back to his large wooden sleigh that was shimmering as if it was freshly polished. The snowflakes that started to fall silently from the sky melted as they landed on the golden railings of the sleigh. With a cloud of warm air puffing from under his beard, Father Christmas heaved himself back onto his sleigh and took the reins as he sat down. With a light crack of the reins and a ho-ho-ho! 
Ho, ho. The reindeer started to push forwards with the giant sleigh in tow behind them. They gathered speed easily as they whooshed between the trees and with a jingle of their crystal clear bells, they raised off the snowy ground and up, up, up into the winter air. Bedwin hopped up onto an old tree stump above the gathered animals and waved frantically at the magical scene above them. Goodbye, he yelled out to them, and thank you for my Christmas tale. Father Christmas let out a final ho, 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 as his sleigh started to grow smaller in the night sky, beginning his long journey back to the North Pole. Father Christmas smiled and looked down to Bedwin Bunny of Honeypot Wood, and all of his loving neighbours gathered around him. His booming voice filled the air one more time as he waved back. A very Merry Christmas to you, my dear friends. Until next December, when we meet again. If the cold starts to bite, I will build you a fire to melt all the ice. And an avalanche of words fall out your mouth as we talk about life. The stars shone like holes in a faraway canvas that covers the sky. Somewhere far in the night was a flickering light and the voice of a choir. Singing, if you give me all of the love in your heart, I will give you mine. If ever a season of hope was needed, it's Christmas time. Uh -huh.